Yes, you, you ask a historian of ideas for an innovation. <laughs> and she comes. Uh, it, it, it's very difficult because many, many ideas only uh, have been thought before from the old Greeks, you know. But I would like to propose a new uh, security paradigm. Because the current security, pa security paradigm be, uh, is built upon um, an unequal distribution of vulnerability. And this unequal distribution of vulnerability is military maintained. And uh, this, this, this unequal distribution of vulnerability also is built upon differentiation uh, of human life. Uh, so that some human life are valuable and other human life is not um, recognized as valuable. I call this current security paradigm as uh, a logic of terror because, and, and this is the language that is used to describe it, 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 it has this logic of um, deterring the enemy from attacking uh, because of fear. So what I propose is that we build security through the opposite direction, an equal distribution of vulnerability. But in order to um, build this equal distribution of vulnerability, the, it, it is very important to accept something that we uh, not accept when we try to um, maximize some people's security by minimizing others or maximizing uh, uh, our security. Um, we, we live in Sweden, though. Uh, so uh, uh, this is, uh, we are involved in this global um, security paradigm from, uh, uh, from, from, from the perspective of the ones that are uh, arming. Um, the, the, the logic is uh, not recognizing, not making oneself vulnerable and maximizing the other's vulnerability. So if we are to go the other way around, we must recognize precariousness and vulnerability and interdependence. And uh, it, it can sound like it is very easy, but it is very difficult to think and to do. So um, I, I read uh, uh, philosophers, <laughs> and this one is one of the philosophers that I have been reading for the last years, Judith Butler, and she has tried to understand the frame of thought that sustained the, um, her countries, the United States, uh, military interventions. She's wrote, uh, written this book, Frames of War, and there she says that this uh, unequal distribution of vulnerability is built because uh, to, um, to construct uh, somebody as uh, subject, as Alexander was talking to us, and to construct the other as object, what you use are norms of recognizability of human life. So some we have some norms, and these norms uh, make us able to recognize life as human life. And these norms that we use, they are changeable, they are historical products. So um, the norms that we have now construct some people as um, invulnerable and other others as uh, vulnerable. And uh, one of the examples that she uses for this construction 
uh, is the uh, Abu Ghraib scandal. Now, this kind of iconography of uh, you know, a military clothed soldier, Western soldier, with this <laughs> triumphalistic posture, uh, with a, 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 a dead enemy, um, is not only uh, this is this, this repeats itself. This is something that uh, we know. Uh, there are many Israeli soldiers posing like this with uh, Palestinian dead bodies, and it, it, it is uh, very common. So how to understand this kind of iconography? And what she thinks is that this is uh, this kind of construction of... Uh, we try to... Uh, or, or there is a, a, a manliness and a, a, and, a, and a subjectivity construction that tries to uh, export vulnerability onto the other. Here we have the perishable body, the precarious body, and then the full cloth and unvulnerable subject together. And, um, well, the, I think that we should change this logic of terror or this security paradigm that is built upon uh, inequality, unequal distribution of uh, vulnerability, because, of course, it is not ethically defensible, but also because it is ineffective. The results of this uh, security paradigm is not more security for anybody, not for the armed ones and the unarmed ones. Um, and the way to do this, I think, is uh, sensibilize. Sensibilize it uh, in, 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 in frames of war, um, Judith Butler talks about uh, these norms of recognizability. And she makes the distinction between what we apprehend. We can apprehend something as alive, but yet not recognize it as alive. But she says, uh, there is a gap between apprehension and recognition. So, um, this this gap is telling us that uh, the norms of recognizability, they are changeable, and uh, uh, apprehension can correct recognition. Um, and uh, one way of sensibilizing, that's, that's already been done, and it's, it's been done in Iraq. Uh, this is a manifestation against uh, Abu Ghraib uh, torture, and this one is a demonstration in uh, Washington. Um, one, one way is deconstructing this subject, object, or this uh, valuable life, unvaluable life uh, differentiation. And this uh, sensibilization, uh, I think, cannot depart from the idea that humanity is something that exists. It's not only that indiv individuals don't exist, humanity doesn't exist. So we cannot, we cannot uh, think that, well, we are all humans and then we have uh, human rights and that's going to solve our problems. We must construct humanity. And the practice of construction of humanity we can call global solidarity. Uh, this global solidarity um, cannot, uh, um, cannot depart from an idea of consensus. And here I would like to, uh, to go back to uh, a political thinker called Chantal Mouffe. She uses uh, a concept of agonism or um, 
agonistic political structure. And this concept uh, is a concept um, for conflict. She, she thinks that democracy and the political, it must contain the possibility of conflict. I think that uh, the security paradigm that we have now is a security paradigm that departs from non-conflict. We have the best of all worlds, and there are no alternatives. So uh, the, 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 the logic of terror is a moralistic one. It is saying uh, the ones that are not um, for the global order, they are a threat to the global order, and they should be eliminated. But in this uh, agonistic uh, logic, you must recognize otherness, must recognize the possibility of conflict and the necessity of conflict in a, in, in a political situation, let us say, a global society. But agonism is a form of conflict that is not deadly. That is not, uh, it, it, it uh, institutionalizes ways of dealing with conflict um, that are not necessarily uh, physically mortal. So um, I think that uh, the, new, the new paradigm should be based on recognition, recognition of otherness, recognition of conflict, and also building of uh, commonality, uh, common humanness. And I think this is exactly all, all here <laughs> in this club. Thank you.